Hello and welcome. This is Sold Cloak, uh, the very first episode. Bear with us. Uh, Sold Cloak is a loose, rotating core of hosts, along with their occasional invited guests that discuss politics, culture, society, human nature, news, and history, all from the best scriptural standpoint they can muster. We're not going to read that description every time, because that's a little long, but you get to suffer through it the first time. Uh, my name is Ethan, and I am here with uh, additional hosts today, Jack and Dan. Say hello, Jack. Hello, peoples on the internet. Mm. It's nice to meet you. Dan, go for it. Hello, world. Is it like a console log, hello, world? Or like... Yeah, I think that was like the first, you know, words that came over the terminal. That's good. That's um, all the internet, baby. That's great. All right. <laughs> Anyways, all right. I'll, I'll open us in prayer, and we'll get on to our, our topic for today. Excellent. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful day, and, and thank you for just an opportunity to speak about issues that affect us in our current world, and I pray that you would please give us wisdom, especially in understanding your word, and I just pray that you'd give us a good conversation and discussion here today, and uh, and help us to apply wisdom to our lives and, and to make good decisions as as leaders in, in our community, and just uh, and help us to be good examples, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so today's topic is going to be nice and light and easy and a good starter topic, capital punishment. So we're going to be, you know, talking about uh, putting people to death, if you should, if you shouldn't, when you should, for what purposes, the dangers of it, who should be allowed to do it or not allowed to do it, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, But before we do, I have an idea, it wasn't really my idea, but uh, an idea to, at the beginning of each episode, read a, a small portion out of the U.S., uh, constitution and uh, just a lot of people haven't ever read through it before um, I've read it I read through it like probably twice or so and and whatnot it's good to read through it more and to discuss it and unpack things you know and, and like other important documents it's written in a kind of rich way that it's I mean it's pretty it is self-explanatory in a lot of ways but like there's a lot in a, a few words so yeah it, it, you need to you need to break it down yeah yeah it's a densely packed document yeah. Actually, I realized like only probably a couple months ago that one of the one of the, the the parts in it was the opposite of what I thought that it was. It was I always thought like a senator or whatever or representative couldn't be from the place that they were being elected to, which didn't make sense to me. But that's how I read it. But it does mean what I thought it should mean, and you actually have to be from you know where you're going to represent. So yeah, that and that's sense. where the term carpetbagger came from. Because they would show up in there with their with their luggage <laughs> to run for and, for and office. move in temporarily to run for office. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty lame. <laughs> Get that address just in time to to sign up for the election. I got my PO box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, today we're just going to read the um, the preamble, and then next episode we can start with Article One, Section One. So. Mm-hmm. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Lovely. Pretty great. It is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I do like I do like how they wrote stuff. Have some liberty if you can keep it, <laughs> <laughs> and a republic if you can keep it. Too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We're we're doing a very good job of keeping a republic. So that's up. That's Fantastic. good. So today's topic: capital punishment. What do y'all think about capital punishment? What do you think, Dan? Uh, well, number one. Uh, The Bible does uh, call for capital punishment given certain circumstances. Um, But the thing to remember is that it's always given to the government Mm -hmm. to do capital punishment. Um, And, of course, in the Old Testament, the government was the religion. um, But when a church steps into that realm, uh, things begin to get dicey. And that has happened over the years. Uh, in New Testament times where churches took it upon themselves to inflict uh, capital punishment, but um, it never ends well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would agree with that. And uh, it's definitely the yeah the realm of government that we see that that's supposed to be instituted, but then you've got the difficulty of 
the quality of the government and are they going to <laughs> yeah. use capital punishment in you know the the proper way as prescribed by the bible you know so that's i've always you know when i was younger i was a huge proponent of capital punishment thinking you know you know the rapist and the murderers why are we keeping these people why are we spending money to keep them in prison indefinitely Mm-hmm. Like that doesn't make any sense to anybody at anywhere. Well, that's why the liberals just decide to let them go. So, you know, right. They agree so, with you, but <laughs> right. And then, um, yeah, no, that was a, a difficulty that I had. And I was like, well, you know, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, so definitely capital punishment for these crimes. Um, and then I got older and I saw, you know, I, I read, I read, I read a lot of, um, historical accounts and things from not too far away. And, Um, read about a man who had been accused of murder, who had been convicted of murder, and then was acquitted 25 years later. And when you look through all the records, it was very clear that he had not committed this murder. He had an alibi in another state. They didn't do DNA testing on the weapon. Like It was so bad. And you think, well this is a state that didn't have capital punishment. If they did, he would have been dead. And then there would Mm -hmm. have been no hope for fixing that problem. So then you're like, okay, well, if you're going to have capital punishment, you have to have competent legal system that is looking for justice, not looking to close a case. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then I, then I was like, Whoa, I had uh, that situation exactly made me really Mm -hmm. reconsider. And that's not the only situation. I mean, there's hundreds, if not thousands of cases where people have been found out to be innocent, even of rape or murder or other heinous crimes. Um, and they were locked up. And a lot of times evidence that would, uh, be used to show their innocence is denied to be allowed by the jury to see it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was, in this case, that was one of the things. um, This person had six or seven eyewitnesses that he was out of state at the time of the murder. And the the judge wouldn't allow that evidence to be put into the courtroom. And you're just like, wait, what? How how could you? I'm like, that's, that's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's been people who were put to death, and then it it came out that they were innocent. He said, oh, "Of course, well, now you know, it's going no going back from that." <laughs> um, right, right. And then there's other cases, obviously, on right. the flip side of that, where people who were definitely guilty and should have been held mm-hmm. to that standard, right. uh, nothing's done to them. Right. And sometimes there's not even a case, and the the prosecutor refuses to even bring it to trial. Right. Yeah, and I think the the first thought, and I've gone back and forth on what I've thought, you know, since being like a young, you know, teenager or whatever, when you're starting to think about where do I stand politically on different topics and issues and everything. And the first thing it seems like, well, that, that does seem pretty dangerous. You know, you see a lot of corrupt governments in, in the past, you know, putting people to death for really bad reasons, you know. Obviously, that's that's horrible. And you're thinking, like, you know, okay, this is isn't it like murder essentially? Like, does the does the does the state have the right to even do this? I don't know. Um, you know, I've heard some really good arguments since then. You know, with uh, with looking at Genesis and looking at Genesis chapter nine, whenever uh, Noah and his family are getting off the ark, and and God's instituting some basic things about society. You know, and and whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Like this is. It's like a this rule of justice, you know, that if you do evil, you're going to have to have evil done to you, and and men are going to do it to you, you know what I mean? And it's it's using right. shedding blood, and that's I mean, that's you don't shed blood for pain, you know. That's usually a, a death sentence. Unless you're the Catholic Church. Oh, they they do that. Oh yeah, oh. they did. Oh yeah, I pleasant. don't know when they stopped, but they did. Very pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, in Romans chapter thirteen, it, it says that the 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 state doesn't. It doesn't say the state, but it's pretty obvious that it's talking about the state. You know, it doesn't bear the sword in vain. So it's it's been given this responsibility and this role to punish, and it and it should do that. You know, you're, it's right. it's not kidnapping when the state puts somebody in prison for a legitimate reason. It's not murder when the state puts someone to death for a legitimate reason. You know, it's it's given the right to do these things. Random people on the street aren't given that right, and I don't think you know you should have vigilanteism and and 
you know, of course, that's a whole nother topic of what do you do if the state's not doing its job? When do vigilantes become, you know, acceptable? Do they ever become acceptable? But we, we don't need to get into that, you know, all right now and everything. Different topic. Never <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if, you know, let's say a state should have capital punishment. I'm assuming you'd have to have really strict you know, stringent policies about that. You'd have to have like a preponderance of evidence. Uh, maybe you could say, okay, this person is being convicted of murder to the point that we are going to put them in prison, but we lack some level of sufficient evidence, right. you know, that we're going to put them <clears> to death. But then again, should you put them in prison for the rest of their life if right. you don't have enough evidence? That's well, also there's, a little difficult. Well, there's the, the levels of evidence. You know, there's the um, preponderance just means more likely than not. Mm-hmm. So on petty crimes or civil crimes, things like that, that you're going to be preponderance of evidence. Um, and then with um, capital crimes, um, you're going to be looking at a beyond a reasonable yeah. doubt level, yeah. right? There's and, and no judge will give you an exact percentage. It's like, what exactly does that mean beyond a reasonable doubt? Because okay, you can't sure. you can't quantify that you know right. and put yeah. numbers to it really it's and, really hard and and they don't want to do that right yeah and it, and it wouldn't be good if they did either I don't think you know because I mean that's where human judgment comes in you know right. you could have a fact and on paper it sounds very similar to a fact in another case but you can tell it's it's different here it it, it means something different you know so right. so yeah. and and that but also we do not I, I've. I've sat through some court cases. I've actually been on a jury uh, f- uh, a couple times, and jurors do not understand the difference b- between preponderance of evidence mm-hmm. and beyond a reasonable doubt. They I don't. Mean, I didn't. Yeah. They don't understand it. They, Nor do they understand jury nullification. I, I do sorry. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I haven't brought it up before <laughs> in a jury, but I do know about it. Um, but yeah, there's. You know, I was, I was, there was a, a, a case that I was sitting, uh, you know, I was a juror on and it was, it was a preponderance of evidence case. It was involved a collision on the road where no one was injured. So yeah. very low stakes. Um, and you know, the guy was arguing, he, he was defending himself. So he was arguing, it's like, you know, you need, you need to find beyond a reasonable doubt that I'm guilty in order to say I'm guilty. And the judge is like correcting him, like, no. It's preponderance of evidence. And I could just see that the jurors' eyes are glazing over, like, I don't understand what this means. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to explain it to him, and they were doing a really bad job. I don't think the judge understood the difference. I think mm-hmm. he reads it because this is what you're supposed to read, but he didn't seem to understand what it meant. And then we went back into the jury room, and they're like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like probably, it's like 50 50, 50, 50 whether he did it or not. So I'm definitely going to say guilty. And I was like, uh, uh, no, n- no, no, it's, it's innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. Preponderance is, is more than 51% sure. Like, yeah, it's, it's not a roll of the dice, right. you know, flip yeah. the coin. Let's, you don't flip yeah, a coin on it. Figure out what you want. Except yeah, now like, Nancy Pelosi says that you go to trial to prove you're innocent. That's right. Really? That's the new that's thing. Nice. That's, that's the latest thing with this Trump oh. indictment. She goes, yeah. he needs his day in court so he can prove that he's innocent. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Isn't that great? So, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's a dangerous thing though, because, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, people don't understand how stringent of a requirement that that's supposed to be What's, when it's going to be different in different people's heads. What, right. what kind of doubt is reasonable to them? You know, this person may think, oh, that's, mm-hmm. that's unreasonable that this could be the case. And so right. I'm sure he did it, you know, whereas somebody else is like, well, I don't know, you know, well, and maybe. then you have the fact that most people who sit on a jury may not be reasonable people anyway, because mm-hmm. most people uh, don't see that as a civic duty, and most intelligent people try their hardest to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And generally speaking, um, unless somebody is really uh, convicted about their civic duty and wants to serve on a jury, most of the jurors have nothing else better to do in life <laughs> but come up there and, and sit. Oh, yeah. And get mm-hmm. their seven dollars or whatever it is mm-hmm. these days. Yeah, and the last the last jury that I was selected, you know, I was supposed to be on the the jury uh, was pretty recent, a few mo- like eight months ago, six months ago, something like that. And um, yeah, it was a it was for a drug possession case, a couple towns over. You know, the case had been going on since two thousand and ten. Um, and then you know the 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 prosecutor 
was asking people, you know, they're weeding people out and says, would you be able to convict somebody on just the word of the officer? Would you be able to do that? And somebody was saying, what do you mean just the word? It's like, let's say, hypothetically, that there was a video recording of the incident, but it was not given to the court, and you were just given the testimony of the officer, would you be able to convict? And the first person was like, if there's a video and the state isn't showing it, and all I have is the word of the officer, I would not be able to convict. And so they wrote that person off. And then the next person (laughs) asked the question. They wrote that person off. They wrote eight or nine people off until Mm -hmm. until a lady was like, oh, yeah, I could convict on just the word of an officer. Like, selection. Um, And I was 100 people back. And they almost made it to me. Mm. They were three people away from me before they found 12 people who would convict on just the word of the officer, even though they were planning on not showing the video. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable about juries, but <laughs> to select a juror isn't the, 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 the method that both sides have to agree on that, that particular juror. And if only one of them says, I don't mm-hmm. want that juror, then they, they go But you the only one. get so many no's. Right. Mm-hmm. You're allowed so many, I don't want him's, and you're allowed so many freebies, and then you're allowed so many, like, four cause. But you you really have to use those carefully. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, and you don't know what you're going to get in the future, you know. Yeah. So you got to be careful because you're getting a jury out of this pool of 120 people one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, you got to be careful with who you say no to because you might be, ah, this isn't perfect for me. You say no. And then mm-hmm. you end up with somebody who's horrible for you. Right. Yeah. And you can't go back and say, yeah, I want that one that I said no to a while ago. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. didn't happen. It goes through one at a time. Um, but it was, it was absurd. And, and then I went, I talked to the prosecutor afterwards, after the selection was done. Um, I stuck around and and talked to him and, uh, you know, he's a nice guy and we chatted and I said, I was like, there, there's really a video. I said, you know, you know, I'm not on the jury. So, Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to talk to any of these people. Like, I was like, there's a video of it, but y'all aren't going to show it. He said, well, there's a video of it and hundreds of people have seen the video. But the police force lost the video before they could go to trial. So it is common knowledge that there was a video and it was spread around. Now, the common knowledge of the video, which the jury is not allowed to know, is that it shows that the person didn't do anything wrong. Mm. That's the common knowledge by the hundreds of people who saw the video before it was scrubbed. Which is why it was scrubbed. Which is why it was scrubbed. What if they lost now, in a fishing accident? This person requested <laughs> accident. This person requested a speedy trial. In 2010. Yeah. This case happened 2022. Mm. 12 years later. And this person is looking at going to prison over drug charges. Right. And the other interesting part of and, that is the police officers can never testify in your favor. Right. They, they can, can't? No. Their their testimony is only allowed to be used against you in a court of law. Hmm. And if they have anything that would be to your benefit, that's hearsay. And that can't be admissible. I wonder where that comes from and why that is. Is that federal or is that state? No, or? that's across the board. And that's that's what the, that's the famous policy. video about never, ever talk to the police mm-hmm. brings that out. And it was mm-hmm. a law professor talking to his law students mm-hmm. and then the police officer coming on afterwards and saying, yeah, that's absolutely true. Exactly. The I've seen that same video. And even the police officer says, yeah, absolutely, do not talk to any police officer. But the police officer's testimony against you is considered to have more weight than some random person off of the street because Mm -hmm. they are an officer of the court. Well, only as so far as the jury weighs it. Yes, but the prosecuting team is going to really... Right. Hound that in to oh, yeah. the jury, and, and the and judge is going to people, hound that in to the jury. And most people that have, um, most people believe that they they get jurors that believe that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it was a it was a it was a really eye opening situation in this simple case where the the police officer knew the person and had a known grudge against them. The video showed that things 
didn't happen the way that the officer said. The video was scrubbed. 12 years later, it finally goes to a, a trial. And this guy's over there sweating bullets, can go to prison. The chances that he's innocent from just the you know the basic information that is out there easily accessible if you google anything about this case mm-hmm. it you know the chances that he's innocent is really 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 high higher than 49 percent. way higher okay <laughs> and um yeah and and you know this prosecutor you know i was talking to him he knew the guy was innocent he was talking to me he's like oh yeah this i was like 20 12 years so like, why, well, why are you prosecuting then exactly and he's like, yeah, he's like, well, you know, they had to wait because it was a big stir and it was on Facebook that the video got deleted and everybody knew about it and we, it was tainting the jury pool. So we had to wait we had to wait till people forgot. Right. Or new people moved into town. And that's corruption. Yeah. Absolute. And if they will do that on a simple drug charge. And when that happens, you know, I see that in our local town, a local community, blatant obvious corruption this guy sleeps well at night somehow and and this is with you know, little things that aren't right aren't all the dramas that we see on you know the the news right. and this whatnot. doesn't even include like deep fakes and tainted dna that has been proven you can actually yeah. create dna evidence right I'm and not so, sure that our, our, our local folks are familiar with deep fakes yeah. and, you know. They don't our, need it. They, it's, our, they're not worried about it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, the deep fakes are really bad now. I don't know if y'all have been following. Yeah. They're really bad. It's so bad. Bad in the sense that they're good. That, they're yeah. so good that you don't know. And, and, and I know they got deep fake voices really down pat, you know, pretty good. And the, the face was, of course, the first one, just the pictures. Now they mm-hmm. got videos. You can put the, the voices with the videos. Yeah, you can get, really get messed up. Yeah. There was, I saw one. I know it's a tiny bit of a tangent, but I, we got to get it out there. Um, yeah, I'm sure y'all remember the the Charlottesville hoax. The there were great people on both sides um, that was put on all news channels saying that Donald Trump was calling Nazis good people, mm-hmm. right? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Um, well, you know, and then the full quote is, you know, I'm not talking about the neo nationalists and the Nazis and all that. He's like, but you know, there's good humans on both sides of this argument that you're having here. Well. Uh, someone has deep faked that whole that whole video, and they have a full clip, and they just changed two or three words, mm-hmm. and but it looks seamless. It looks exactly perfect. Mm-hmm. Everything matches. You would never know. And so, if you're going to argue with somebody now, they can pull up that video, and that video now proves their side instead of your side and your memory. Everything is right except for two or three words, and it's his voice in the video, and it looks right. And you're thinking, did I remember that wrong? This is gaslighting on a whole new different <sighs> level. A whole new level. Because <laughs> it's not your word that that's what it's like. Hey, let's pull up the video, right? Yeah. And it got spread with your memory. all over the place. And some of the um, someone showed that this happened, that it's been changed since then. Mm-hmm. But one of the original YouTube videos that was used to debunk the situation had been edited and had the new video Mm. as the video it was showing and it still had all the old comments and all the old likes someone in youtube decided to switch these videos out someone with some serious authority 1984 on steroids (laughs) right and so if you like oh i remember which video i've already seen it I've got it you bookmarked click, in my library. Bo- the yeah, link was the same. Yeah, if you send the link to somebody to try to prove them, you know, and without at some watching point, it again, you could forward that link to somebody else, mm-hmm. you know. And it was a different video, but it was yeah. only a different video for four words. And that I saw that a couple of weeks ago. I was like, yeah, oh, and, that's so much worse than just like a fake video. One way to really, you know, <laughs> mess so things bad. up to the point you can't undo it is is make innocuous ones. Okay, so obviously Trump could get on TV and try to say, oh, that one's fake. Of course. Anybody can you can from there you can you can just mess things up further. But let's say let's say you know Biden gets on on the TV and he says you know we're going to do such and such thing and you make eat ice cream whatever <laughs> and you, you get ten different deep fakes and they all say almost the same thing and no one would even really disagree that that's what the message he was trying to get across. But now you have no idea what is real and what's not. You know you could spread all of them. This, this person saw one. This person saw one. They agreed that they saw the same video when they talk about it. And no one knows that they're 
you know, obviously, if you have a really big, crazy one that's really, you know, unique, we're going, in, we're going to nuke Russia or something. That's right. It's pretty clear that that's fake. And that's not where the danger really is. It's the subtle ones. It's yeah. the subtle ones. It's the when you change three or four words mm-hmm. out of a speech, you can completely change the speech mm-hmm. by changing three or four words. Well, those are the three or four words that defended him before, and those are the right. ones that condemn him. You know, yeah. Now. You change that from a. Accurate defense of your. So we're saying so. deep fake should be a capital crime. Is it? Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, okay. All right. I, I'm just so, wondering how this but, had to do with. Yeah. Well, uh, the capital re- punishment. What we're getting to is <laughs> is in in, in faking court. evidence is easier right. than it's ever been. Right. Uh, corrupt, um, uh, corrupt. You know, police and corrupt judicial system. judicial system, prosecutors, judges. The whole situation mm-hmm. is is in a really bad shape right now. Really yeah. bad. And it's scary to give someone that you don't trust. You know, I've, I've heard, heard someone say, like, maybe this person does need to be put to death, but I don't want people like Kamala Harris making those kinds of decisions. You know what I mean? Like, she she was in the position to be right. calling for that if she had the power to do it. Right. And she could just kill them by her cackling. <laughs> well, not everyone. <laughs> some Only people, some people. Some people are deaf. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, if you're, you're giving that kind of people all across the country the power to now put people to death people that they know are innocent that they're only doing this for financial reasons or political reasons or whatever and that's you know obviously really scary so i feel like if you are going to have it you have to you have to have it locked down pretty good but i mean honestly if you have an entirely untrustworthy state then you you can't really trust anything with them i mean you can't work with that right i mean you have people that they tripped and fell and punched themselves 75 times in the eye socket and died in police custody. Yeah. I mean, you some know. stuff you're not going to fix by policy. Right. You just have, There's you have a problem. But at least everybody knows, you know, you didn't, you didn't lethal inject them after, you know, saying that they were guilty and all that, you know, it's like, okay, well, they, they got rid of this person and, yeah. you know, we're upset about it, but, but Epstein didn't hang himself. No, there's no way. Once again, the video was uh, not working. Isn't it amazing how that always happens? Right when you need it. Yeah, and technology, it's just it's unreliable. You know? it's so Except good. when they need it. It's so good. Yeah. If you do something illegal, that technology is amazing. Yeah. Just high definition of you doing it. Now, something but- <laughs> that, that, that you, Dan, have, have pointed out in, in times past is by by delaying justice let's say of course that person it looks like they were innocent and that's obviously just i mean that's criminal on its own to to stretch somebody out that far 12 years and anxiety and worrying about what's going to happen can't to buy them. a gun can't buy a gun you don't you don't know what kind of decision life decisions you can make oh i wonder if i can get yeah. married i don't know you can't you know? move out of the state yeah like you're Probably already can't get a hunting license cannot get a hunting license yeah, you're also, already being punished most jobs you, know. you can't get because right. You're under criminal investigation for a felony, and you got to put that in because when they run your background check, it'll it's say pop. that. Right, and I mean that that kind of makes sense if you're under investigation for like. Unless a few you're weeks, running for Congress, you, know? you can run for Congress, mm-hmm. okay. and you can be elected to public hey, office. That's what that guy needs to do. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's true. A, but it's it. You were saying that it's it's a problem in the in the opposite as well, and that. If somebody is okay, so we we they go to court. We know that they're guilty. Let's say you know this person's gonna uh, be put on on death row, and it's thirty eight years before they ever get you know get killed. Then like what? It's almost like what's the point? Like you miss the the justice in a way, you know? Right, what I mean? and and you rob the the local people of that justice, and mm-hmm. you know things like a change of venue where we're not gonna try this murderer who's obviously guilty of murder we're not going to try him in this county because we can't get a fair trial because everybody knows he's guilty and so we're going to move it five hours away so that local people can't even go to the trial but the trial may be 10 years 15 years down the road and even if he does get uh, a just sentence where okay he did commit the murder and he does deserve to die now it's 20, 30 years later before that ever happens, and none of the justice is served in the minds of the local people. They've been robbed of mm-hmm. that ability to get closure to that and say, okay, you committed this heinous crime, here's the punishment, and then we don't have that teaching opportunity for that next generation coming up saying, if you do this, here's the consequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I, I think I think sometimes we, and even as as Christians, misunderstand the the, the concept of, of justice in that sense and revenge. You know, we're we're told we're not supposed to take revenge. It's not that revenge is bad. It's just it's not our job to take it. You know, if somebody does you wrong, you don't go do them wrong to get them back. But what does God say? He's going to do it. Like it is a good thing to do, and, and He's ordained the state to do yeah, that. And in this particular, Earth, yeah, in right. this particular situation, when it comes to these criminal type offenses, you know, obviously He He is the ultimate one that the revenge is. You know, all situations and lots of them aren't criminal situations, anyways. Um, but with criminal stuff, like He's given that power to the state, and if it's not done, like we think, oh, we should we should just be 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 nice and friendly, and not not want bad things to happen to people, but. If you've, you know, been mistreated and nothing happens about it, like there's a natural kind of bitterness that seeps right. into you. You know, it's really unhealthy. Oh, yeah. It's really bad. Not that you, not that you just like, you know, you hate this person or despise them. I mean, and you, you can have people that have, you know, forgiven their, their perpetrators and whatnot, somebody that's killed a family member or whatever. Right. But it's, it is unhealthy to just chronically not have that closure and, and you get that, that resentment and that cynicism. Well, and then, then you, you end know. up with, you know, vigilante. Yeah. situations because you know if somebody is you know perpetrating a heinous crime right two or three times mm-hmm. and nothing is done yeah you know, yeah there isn't well, like the recent incident where the father of the young girl who was repeatedly raped by this man mm-hmm. and yet because of our justice system, he was going to get off with a light sentence and so mm-hmm. the father took the matters into his own hands and and killed the man. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're seeing that more often. I mean, it's always been a, the case that things like that do happen. You know, we, rem- we remember the, the, the time, you know, this is a very interesting one, where the guy, there was a guy who was a uh, a, a, tech, a coach, I don't remember exactly what type, like a, some sort of martial arts instructor who was uh, molesting these boys and then kidnapped one of them and went out of state. Um, and then this was this was years and years ago. I don't think I remember that. Okay. And then he got, you know, he got caught finally and they were bringing him back and it looked like there was no appetite when it come to the prosecution to do, really do much about it. It they they just didn't look like anything was going to happen and so like the local police told the dad, "Hey, we're coming through this train station at this time." And there's a blind corner right here and we're just going to so happen to walk a little bit fast and a little bit slow. And there's going to be a little gap between us. And the guy stepped out and shot him, killed him right there on the train station. Came to find out that the police had helped him orchestrate it, the local police. Um, and then the local, you know, district attorney and all that were like, ah, well, you know, he was just, you know, criminal insanity because of all the terrible mm-hmm. things that Crime happened. Crime of passion. Crime of passion. And then they gave him, I think, like six months of community service for shooting and killing this guy. And it was such a weird... Now, of course, it was like a like a state-sanctioned yeah. um, situation because, because of the technicalities of it, where he was when he got caught. Their rules and stuff were way different than their, mm-hmm. but it was this weird situation where everybody kind of knew that justice was not going to be served, mm-hmm. and everybody was really upset about it. And so then you get, like I said, vigilante. Now that's vigilante justice mixed with the state, like corruption, yeah. but like corruption awkward. that we're like, you know, yeah. we kind of understand because you know. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> yeah, not, it's and, not good. That's the problem. <laughs> and not not getting into the topic of you know is vigilante justice ever you know justified or anything. But I think anybody would agree, no matter what side you're on, is that it is not good in the sense that it's, it's subpar. Like you shouldn't need it. The only time vigilanteism right. is is implemented is when the state is falling short on its right. job for justice. Right, right. which so is what was happening. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so that's, I think that's, you know, why it's important, you know, like what you said, that, that justice, it is dealt with, you know, quickly. Obviously, you want to have a quick trial, which is, we're going to see it in the Constitution. It's one of our rights that we, we can have a quick trial. You shouldn't have to wait 12 years and have to have your life on hold, you know, just to be told that you're innocent if everything goes well. <laughs> you know, like, right. that's best case scenario. And uh, But also, you know, I think after the trial, you know, what's the reason to wait until you you implement a punishment? And um, I think one reason is, you know, that there is pardoning available, you know, like with, with governors and, and presidents and whatnot. You know, they can they can pardon someone. And appeals. 
and appeals. Yeah, so you, I feel like there is a certain basic level of, of time, but you don't need 38 years for pardons and right. appeals. You know, you don't need, well, I, I need, I need you know, 12 mm-hmm. different governors to give, have a chance, you know, as they all get elected and they all have a chance and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't see the, the benefit of having somebody on death row. They know they're going to die, you know, and you're just going to mm-hmm. keep them there for 30 years. It doesn't, yeah. On the taxpayer's dime. It's not good for anybody. It's not good for the the perpetrator. It's not good for the, right. the the family of the victim. It's not good for. But then again, you have that guy who was on death row for twenty years, and then he was acquitted, and it turned out that, you know, mm-hmm. it was a complete sham trial that got him on death row, and still it took twenty years before a judge was willing to hear the case. They kept appealing and appealing. They had the evidence. Mm-hmm. It was a slam dunk trial. Like they they had proof. I mean, usually it's you know state proves you're innocent until proven guilty. They had proof he was innocent, and it took him twenty years to get another trial. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like he was going to trials and trials. No, no, no. It took twenty years to get one, and that's where that's why a lot that's of wrong. The people, a lot of the people, are pu- pushing for well, let let's hold off just mm-hmm. in case you made a mistake. That's where that that's where that yeah. came from. Yeah, because they because they made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we're, but we're yeah we're in this position where right. it's like if we're gonna have it, it should be done in a reasonably short period of time. But now let's take it from a different tact. And I'm not saying I'm arguing for this. I'm just saying here's an argument mm-hmm. from a Christian standpoint. As soon as you end a life, there's no more chance for repentance. Mm-hmm. So I- if I have somebody in jail. And the state takes their life. And what if they had been able to live another five years or ten years, even if it was in prison, and listened to the evangelist that came through and preached and received the gospel Mm, and and believed and was saved, Mm -hmm. then we're not just talking about his physical life. We're talking about eternity. Do you think that the state has a responsibility to consider that? No. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> this, that's not a, the state's consideration. I'm yeah. just saying from a Christian's perspective, mm-hmm. right. that is an argument that some have used to yeah. uh, argue against capital right. punishment. Which I mean, is not an argument without mer- merit. Right. No, yeah, but I think you could you could try to use that argument in other areas and see that it may, it may lack. Like, for instance, let's say in war. You're like, well, I don't want to shoot the invaders that are coming to kill us because, you know, I wanted to give them a chance to live longer so they can, you know, hear the gospel. I understand. Message I was saved. just saying that is an argument. Like, well, sometimes you gotta you gotta pull the trigger at some point. You know what I mean? Right. You gotta decide, you know, to to do it at some point. But yeah, I mean, yeah. But there's an obvious difference between an invading army that is going to rape, pillage, yeah. and steal so, versus right. somebody sitting yeah. in prison That's that yeah. is mm-hmm. unlikely to harm many more people well there's the there's of course you are right as the one's imminent physical danger you know the other one you don't have that imminent physical danger but there is the danger to society that we're talking about of you know you're going to have this this bitterness uh right rising up and everything because mm-hmm. people see that justice isn't being served that's its own kind of danger it's invisible and it's slow and it's not like an invading horde you know so right. I feel like it needs to be considered but it is but insidious the and and the longer the more people and the longer people you know sit on these, you know, the death row and all that, you know, the, how much money is poured into that and where does that money come from? Mm-hmm. Because now you're taking away from the community that this person wronged them. And then instead of having justice, now they have to pay for this person to stay alive and be protected and also medical and all these other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dental and education and right. even sex changes now. Right. So you know you're looking at between sixty and one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year per inmate is the going rate, and you know that's just like yeah to see somebody that money being... is coming from somewhere yeah. yeah you know it's coming from that community that has been wronged by this person in the first place it's, yeah so yeah there's all of that um, and also we gotta we gotta because of the way people think the psychological aspect of this if you're on a jury um and you know that if you say yeah this person is guilty i believe this person is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt they proved their case extremely well there's the evidence they're guilty 
I know they'll be dead in the next year and a half unless they're pardoned or new evidence that is shot, groundbreaking comes out, right? And there's a you know, and then they they have an appeals trial, right? But if you know that that's what you're doing, you're going to be more likely to pay closer attention mm-hmm. and also feel responsible, yeah, for that decision. And we then hope. also we hope, right? Mo- but most people would. No, you know, of course, a lot of yeah, people wouldn't. Absolute cold psychopath, but hopefully <laughs> right. you don't have 12 of those. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's, but if you know, like, oh, well, because a lot of people, I I mean, I've talked to people about jury duty a lot of times. This is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I do, I do think it is a civil responsibility. Oh, yes, and, I do too. And I serve when I'm able to. Yeah. But. Um, I'll cancel stuff so that I can, you know. Yeah. Like I'll do whatever I can reasonably to be available. Right. I am not going to try to take any out. I'm going to be on that jury if, if at all possible. And the grand it's... jury is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, because with the grand jury, you have the ability to tell the prosecutor, the state, you don't have enough evidence. Mm-hmm. This this We're going to no-build this. We're going to not send this to the court system because you haven't done your due diligence or you lost your evidence, uh, right. or you can't find the evidence, or you think there's evidence. No, right. Don't waste our time. Yeah, don't even start the process. Yeah, no bill. And um, yeah, so yeah, it's so important. But you know, a lot of people don't think that. But I've talked to people, and um, yeah, I said in this situation, you know, someone, you think they probably are guilty of murder. You mm-hmm. think they're probably guilty, but they didn't prove it. But more than likely, they're guilty. How would you rule? It's like. Oh, then I, I would say guilty. I say, okay, on, on that level of m- more than likely but not sure. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I said, okay, if that person was going to be executed when they walked out the door, yeah. then what would you do? Like and you're like, you're, you're going like, to see them hanging in the courtyard. Like, uh, oh, well, I, I would need like serious, solid proof. Right. Like we're leaving the courtroom and going to the gallows. Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, their whole idea of how to vote changes. Which could be really healthy. Exactly. Better because for the person being tried. Actually better for yeah. the person being tried. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, If I was on trial for murder, mm-hmm. I would rather the jury know that I was going to go get beheaded in the parking lot mm-hmm. when they put in their, if I was, if they said guilty, yeah. than if there's a 30-year process with 27 appeals in between me and the the you know, the lethal injection Mm -hmm. because there's, it's just like, Oh, that someone else, if we made a mistake, someone else can figure it out later. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to take that responsibility off yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you don't want to be like, well, what if he is the murderer? And what if I let him out and then he kills somebody else? And then that's on me. Mm -hmm. But if I keep him in jail, he's safe. They're safe. Everybody's safe. Nothing is on me. Yeah. Kick the can down the road. And people love to kick the can down the road. So I think that's a good point. Yeah. It, it actually to, gets you, you, the chances of you getting a more just outcome of, of guilty or not guilty is right. is going to be better. Yeah, you're going to have that all that weight on you. Yeah, you know, as a juror. A yeah, I mean, just think about. It. I mean, if you knew that person was getting beheaded in the it, parking lot it, in front of you, what's funny is that I mean, the the thing comes naturally of beyond reasonable doubt. It's like, well, I would have to be convinced beyond right. reasonable doubt. Now, like, yeah, I would have to be 100 percent sure to where like I. I cannot imagine a case doubts, where somebody right. would be able to prove it otherwise, you know. And otherwise, like, you're not going to be okay with it. You know, you, yeah. otherwise, you're not going to be able to sleep at night knowing that you watch that happen. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a level at which point, you're like, okay, yeah, we're sure he did it. He will do it again. Yeah. And this is the right thing. And I'm 100% sure. So, and, and of okay, course, then forward. you can, you can walk out yeah. feeling cleared because, you're like, well, I know that he's not going to be out mm-hmm. doing that anymore, you know, and I right. know I made the right decision. I'm and there's, sure, and there's know. people like that. You know, you got these school shooters who kill kids. And now, of course, this most recent one, you know, it was suicide by cop, and that's a lot of the time what they want. Um, but you know, that's the kind of situation where you know, there's there's 37 eyewitnesses, it's on video, it's so cut and dry, and then yeah, you say you have your jury trial, mm-hmm. and the people they look at all the evidence, and yeah, beyond a reasonable doubt, yeah, you had him in the parking lot, and I'll sleep fine, <laughs> you know. That's where it should be, I think. So that's that's where I'm at. I just don't know if it's implementable anymore. I think we're so mired in the bureaucracy of everything. So what happens in government collapse? Well, you have to. You and have to go back now to we are a community that's 
trying to survive to the point where we can begin to thrive and rebuild. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like in that situation? Well, you have, you have very limited options in those situations. You have expulsion, forgiveness, and death. Yeah, imprisonment's not practical for any long period of time. I yeah. mean, you, you, can, you can hold somebody in the, in the jailhouse for a little while while you're trying to figure stuff out, but you can't mm -hmm. just put everybody in the little jailhouse. Oh, you yeah. know? <laughs> Things become yeah, much more straightforward. But yeah, that, that, I mean, you really, those are your only fe feasible options are, you know, there's the, there's the forgiveness. You say you pay the person back you know, there's mm -hmm. a, there's a, there is a penalty that the person pays that they can pay that you agree upon. You know, say the person got caught stealing food. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, well, you have to give them back that level of food plus, you know, you're yeah. doing extra labor and and then we'll forgive you, but never again, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the, you you did something that it isn't forgivable. We don't trust you enough or to do it. Or not excusable. Not excusable, right? Yeah. It's not, we can't trust you in our community anymore, but it's not to the level of we need to kill you. Well, mm -hmm. then you get expelled, you know, you get, Send exiled. Out. You're exiled, right? You're you're out of the community. You're not allowed to come back. If you come back, we'll kill you, right? That's that's exile. And then there's the thing that yeah, you did something and it's so heinous mm -hmm. that we don't trust you out there in the world anymore. Yeah. You can't pay back the person that you right. killed. You can't pay back their family for the loss, right? And we don't and, trust you out there in the wild. Yeah. And we're gonna we're and the other thing to consider is anybody that's expelled has knowledge of your inner workings, right. and so you may be releasing somebody mm -hmm. that can. Go mm -hmm. to your enemy and tell them right. uh, things that you don't want them to know. Right. Uh, just a, a, a random thought. It is there any, and I, I don't know necessarily in, in at least the old Levitical law, which I know is for the Israelite nation, not for our nation specifically. But is there any case of imprisonment there as a punishment? Like, there's lots of okay, you did you, this, you you harmed your, per, your your neighbor in this way. You know, this is how you pay him back. You you stole their their goods you you pay them back in kind you destroy their goods you pay them back you know or or there's the you know you kill this person there's expulsion mm -hmm. there's all these things but I, I never remember hearing about imprisonment i mean there are cases of imprisonment in the bible obviously the new testament you got paul and all that sort of stuff that's under a roman system mm -hmm. you jeremiah have, was held in prison yeah yeah he was but with any crime or just the, <laughs> the king didn't like him <laughs> yeah, for preaching the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not a good example. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the Babylonians used imprisonment and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I don't know if just a random thought. I don't know if, if God's ever mm -hmm. given his nation that as an example of like, Hey, this is one of the ways that you, which is weird. Right. Cause usually in the old Testament, it's, it's you, you make it right mm -hmm. or you leave or you die kind of like what you're saying. But Bear in mind that that law, especially in the early days, was given when they were going to be wandering in the wilderness for mm -hmm, 40 right. years. Um, and so more of a survivalist type environment where you, you don't can't have, have a mobile option. prison. It's, right. not, right. it's not feasible. Right. You have to have a level of uh, wealth mm -hmm. and established power yes. to imprison someone for any length of time. Yeah. There has to now, of be. Of course, John was sent to you know the Isle of Patmos, kind of exiled, mm -hmm. similar to what Australia used to be. Yeah, you know, like a penal colony, a penal kind of colony. Thing, yeah. right? We're going to yeah. send all of the bad people there, and y'all just stay there. Yeah, and that happened often. You know, it's like we have some self-made penal colonies in our country. Yeah. Well, that's how we got Louisiana. Let <laughs> <laughs> well, bad people in one place. <laughs> Take a prisoner and a prostitute. You chain them together and send them to Louisiana. What? <laughs> you, Ethan doesn't know about this? That's a thing? You know about this. No. What? Oh, this is a known thing. Oh, uh, really? Not by us, apparently. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, y'all should look it up. Uh, they, I, they I was need... public school educated. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, while the French still owned the Louisiana area. They don't? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay. Not technically. Macron uh, does not own Louisiana. Yeah, Emmanuel over there. But, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they, they were taken... They needed more family units. Uh, there wasn't enough people to populate their area, and they were requesting people be sent. And a lot of people didn't want to go. Um, and so they made a deal with people. They said, hey, you're you're a criminal. You're in prison. Um, if you marry this prostitute um, and go start a family, we'll expunge both of all of y'all's records, expunge your debts, and you'll be a new unit. And they it's a win-win. <laughs> 
they sent boatloads of people, and what they did is they, you know, they hooked, they they shackled them together, and they, hook, they hooked them together. <laughs> you have twenty people hooked one. up, <laughs> yeah, and sent them over, and and, oh, and that's where the term my old ball and chain. That's exactly right. And hooker, they were <laughs> they were literally <laughs> chained together. Wow, <laughs> and uh, and sent over to no, populate I did not know that. Louisiana. It was a uh, it happened quite a bit, and wow. so. Yeah, that's something. It's a very interesting. Yeah, they uh, they went into New Orleans. Hmm. And it's it's level of debauchery <laughs> has stayed the same since. <laughs> it all makes sense now. No, but, uh, no, I, I, I don't think it was that bad then. Oh. No, <laughs> yeah, it was just it's just criminals just, and hookers just... then. <laughs> <laughs> now it's satanic. <laughs> Oh goodness! That's but, awful. Uh, yeah, but okay. So people, I guess I, I guess a lot of people don't know that. I thought uh, I thought that was I'm, more common no, knowledge. I've never heard of it before. No, I never heard of that. So here's here's the thought. I was I was talking with a a guy from China once. It's a little unrelated, but you'll see how it relates about gun rights. And of course, they don't have gun rights in China. Um, he was visiting America. I took him and uh, we went and shot guns, and he had, he enjoyed it and everything. And we were talking about it, and um, and he was he was saying that it wouldn't be good to give a bunch of Chinese people guns right now, like in China, but you know, they're, they've, they've never been used to that level of, of freedom and they don't have that level of responsibility. It's like road rage is really bad over there. If you just gave people guns, they just start shooting each other on the roads, you know, cause they're upset with each other. Don't and, they have um, a population problem? Yeah. They're starting to lose population. That's a problem. I <laughs> know uh, <laughs> the one child policy didn't work out too well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> planned economies and planned families. Not the best in the world. Uh, but, um, that's, the nature of government intervention. You want to destroy anything, let the government get involved. Yeah. Hmm. So Unless you need punishment. population and you you chain a prostitute to a criminal, you can get children. <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to you, state, this time. <laughs> Short-term intervention. Just about six weeks of a boat ride, and then and it's all up to y'all, buddy. <laughs> wow. But, um, you know, he, he was saying that, you know, and, and I agree with this, of course, it's the old adage from Spider-Man, but with much power comes much responsibility, you know, and, and you see this with, with kids growing up, you know, as you go from a little kid and you're getting older, like a teenager, you have the freedom to go out and do more stuff, but you also have more and more responsibilities and, you know, it's, it's up to you to make good decisions and you'll be held responsible if you don't, whereas little children just don't make any of their own decisions, their parents do. And, um, so we were saying at, at the current state that, you know, the Chinese population just isn't ready for something like that. They would have to grow in their, their self control and everything. So you'd have to give them smaller freedoms. Essentially they get used to that smaller freedoms. They get used to that until they're ready and able to, to do that. Like they aren't ready for it. You can't just thrust it upon them. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if in a similar kind of style, you know, a government could be in a situation to where it should do capital punishment. It should have the right to do capital punishment, but it doesn't have the responsibility to do it yet. It's not, there it's not it's not mature enough it's too problematic you know and therefore should you take a, not give that freedom to them yet until they prove they're responsible with it you know i don't know that's just a thought prove it to who i don't know i guess the people decide when they're going to let the government have that power you know because you don't want to give a you know dictatorial despotic ruler the power to to put people to death and also give them the power to decide when that happens. Like, well, well, the nature of, you know, dictatorial despotic is you don't give him or allow him <laughs> they to take any, the power. He does what he wants. Have you met Australia <laughs> or Canada? <laughs> There's people that give despots power. Yeah, that is true. They are willing to do it. It's amazing. But do you think that, like, America right now in its current state should um, implement a more like stringent or i guess you could even just say like a state if because i know like, mm -hmm. f federally speaking i don't even think murder is is handled i think it's it's a state by state thing you know right. so should should a state how do they do that on, in federal territory there's there like are murder in dc right that is a federal they probably handle it themselves right dc like as a city i don't know i have to look into it no there's i mean there are federal um, especially if you have murder in multiple states, yeah, you know. Yeah, they, but does the federal government have capital punishment, or is it only life sentences? I would I have to look know. it up. I don't remember right now. And things have changed since the last time I studied it. Some places have quit yeah. doing it. Some people have started again. So I'm just saying, you know, if I commit right. murder on federal property, it should not be under state jurisdiction. Right. Mm. I don't know. I'm going to read so. up on that. What's a double check? 
capital punishment is a legal penalty under the criminal justice system of the United States federal government. It can be imposed for treason, espionage, murder, large-scale drug trafficking, or attempted murder of a witness, juror, or court officer in certain cases. And when was the last time the federal government put somebody to death? Yeah. In Guantanamo or anywhere else? <laughs> about- I, I, I meant like in the, in the no. I'm not talking about, you know... Uh, everything else there and best the time operations up. Abdul Alaman al or something like that yeah. no I mean yeah. you know the, the full <laughs> arrested tried sentenced to death yeah, that's a lot of work carry man. out that's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot easier to hit him with a drone. Drones are cool you can just like little joysticks it's like a video game pew 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 you know and just you don't have to worry pew, about pew. it really? yeah but I don't, I don't yeah I don't know about the, the whole murder thing when that comes in maybe that is just when they're on um, federal, federal land. land I'm not sure yeah. yeah, and obviously they don't um, do anything for treason anymore. You know, whenever um, uh, what's his name uh, Edward Snowden came out with all that stuff, I think it was who who's the gov who was the governor of Alaska, the woman that was running as vice president while Palin. Back? Yeah, mm-hmm. she was calling for him to be put to death, and I was like, the what? No, like this guy's he's. I mean, okay, yes, he did commit a crime, but he's showing us. Who, who else? Government yeah, who else could do it? Right. I mean, and how would you do it without? It wasn't like he was selling, you know, secrets to a foreign power. Yeah, he was telling yeah. us about how they're messing with us. It, right. it doesn't involve the foreign. Yeah. Tell the US I mean, citizens is it really abused. treason at that point when you're trying to? Well, it depends. See, the government doesn't believe in we the people, by the people, for the people. Yeah, they they are. We are the government, and these are the people. And doing something against us mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. treason. Doing but something of course, against the people is not. That goes all the way back to when the government became a corporation. Right. It's a separate entity than the people. And the people inside of it feel that way. Yeah, I mean, that that's the kind of situation when, like, I don't want the government to be wielding the death penalty for people like Edward Snowden. Like, right. that seems very much wrong and not how it, it should be handled. You yeah. Know, but but you, well, you know what it all boils down to is the jurors. We have checks and balances for a reason. If the jurors would just act right. Except under the Patriot Act, where you don't have to even be tried, and you can just be held indefinitely. Right. But they they don't care what's legal about that anyway. <laughs> so, but I'm just saying, you know, if, if on your question is, you know, can we give them this power because they're not trustworthy? Mm-hmm. Well, the system doesn't require them to be trustworthy. Mm-hmm. The, the system requires citizens to pay attention and to do the right thing when it comes to being a juror. And when you're a juror on a trial that's been going on for 12 years, right? You go in there and you're like, first of all, innocent. Doesn't matter if they're guilty or not. It's 12 years. Right. They have a right to a speedy trial. Even if he is guilty, it's you, time served. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> what, you, what are you doing? Y'all are insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the jury has the right to do that. You come through, you put all the evidence, and the, let's say let's say they have a video of the guy doing the crime, and he's got you know four ounces of weed, and that was what the crime was, and all this stuff, and they got they proved it beyond any doubt. That's when the jury goes back and they look at each other and says, "This guy's been living with the you know sort of Damocles over his head for twelve years, requesting a jury trial over and over and over and over again. Won't do is it." Is that is that prosecutable in some way in some higher court? against either the prosecutor or whoever's responsible well, for the delay on that. The judge is supposed to throw it out. Yeah. Which has happened. I've known people, I mean, start over. <laughs> uh, so I got this story about an old man and uh, he was, uh, he, got, he got a speeding ticket coming into a small town that is known for corruption. Um, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Sorry, that's too much information. People got to figure out where we live. <laughs> no. No, um, that's many yeah. small towns many across, small towns. across um, the nation. And, uh, what had happened was there was a uh, AT wheeler coming up behind him, going very quick, and person obviously radared the vehicle behind him, and he wasn't speeding. He knew he wasn't speeding. People in the vehicle knew he wasn't speeding, and so he went and um, requested a jury trial for the speeding ticket because you can't trust certain peoples in certain towns. Um, and he especially made if it, they're connected with certain lodges. That's right, and uh, so he he requested. A jury trial and he requested officially requested a speedy trial and at that time there was actually a time limit on the books 
of 11 months. The state has 11 months to have your speedy trial. And 16 months later, trial date rolled around, and he walked in, and he said, you have 11 months, it's been 16 months, that's all my evidence. And the judge threw it out. Not guilty, trial's over. Now, a lot of municipalities and jurisdictions have gotten rid of their, like, written down time limit of what is a speedy trial Mm -hmm. because people who were paying attention were requesting speedy trials. Your trial comes up in two years, you know? So basically what, what we need is we need to have, uh, citizens of particular cities being active in their local politics, electing good people, making sure that there's good policies on the books, that sort of thing. And then you could have, you know, capital punishment because capital punishment usually is a local ish type thing. Like it really is maybe to the state, you know, like, it's not usually least, some national issue, you know. So, right. and that's what you need to you need to, yeah, just yeah, just remove a lot of that um, decision making power. When are we going to bring the charges? Well, we already have, we got rules on the books. If you know a crime happened, you have so long to bring charges, mm-hmm. and that's it. <laughs> You got three years on this type of thing. You got two years on this type of thing. You got six years on this type of thing. We got rules for it. Mm -hmm. You know it happened. Now you're on a time limit. And it makes sense. If if it wasn't worth your time to push forward on it, it probably wasn't a big deal. I mean, once the person is officially accused, now you're on another time limit. You've got a certain amount of time to have that trial. Mm -hmm. If you can't figure it out, too bad. Mm, They're not going to move forward with that. Too many people are making too much money. And the system is just insane with the, because then you have to stop arresting so many people on trumped up stuff because you don't have time. If you don't have time to do all of the. Well, now the defund the police is really making that happen. They're not even mm-hmm. uh, investigating rapes and sexual assaults in some cities. Right. But they are going to people's houses and uh, giving them citations for having vehicles that they're using for storage. And I think they're arresting people for making memes now and putting uh-huh. them in jail. Yeah. So, hmm. you know, just... Uh, in America? Yeah. Election interference. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so. and, and yet, you know, they won't do anything about the Chinese voting machines, yeah. but they will accuse a person who made a meme of election interference. That's right. So I mean, It's all about priorities, you know. It's so bad. It's yeah, so I, mean, I think one one issue we have though is we have we have people that have good intentions and good heart citizens, and they care about politics, but they go home and they turn on national news and they see you know Trump getting indicted, and they get all of their anger and frustration about a broken system is now focused on some district attorney in New York that they mm-hmm. have no af- effect on. When in their own town, there's corruption happening. Right. But they're not paying attention. And I think we've gotten extremely used to looking at the very tip top of all the problems that right. almost none of us can touch. You know, If we'll solve it at the local level, it will have a trickle up effect and be solved at the national level. But people have been disengaged from mm-hmm. civics, from going to city hall mm-hmm. and holding them accountable, mm-hmm. from going to the county court and holding them accountable. Yeah. Uh, from serving, from even serving on a jury, but uh, much less even running for city council, mm-hmm. uh, because they don't want it to interfere with the you know their children's little league or their hunting season or whatever else other priorities they right. have, rather than ensuring that the community we live in is is good. Yeah, yeah. We have become very metropolitan in that sense. You know, we're we're focused on, of course, the the minute details of our life, and we're mm-hmm. focused on the global stuff of whatever's happening in the world that's important. But we're missing like everything in between. You know, from the, the local politics all the way to like you know state politics and stuff like that. Right. And that we could do something. You can call your representative. You can call and bread and circuses, yeah. and mm-hmm. we're content. Yeah. So, but yeah, we definitely need to 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 do a big big change because even in our small towns, town over, you know, like I was saying. An uh, old friend of mine was telling me, and they are getting harassed by the the local government and the local police, getting fines for vehicles that aren't registered because they ex- they've expired, mm-hmm. um, that are parked at his house. Mm-hmm. But um, they're in the yard. They're not on the street. Right. They have nothing to do with the street. He has a privacy fence. He has acreage. And then it's none of their business. Exactly. And I've been I've been over there. Um, I've mowed his grass a bunch of times and we're talking about a box truck and 
he uses it for storage. He has a roll-up door. It's clean. It's being used for storage. It's a reasonable thing. It's not, not even an eyesore. It's not even like a broke-down school bus. Right. <laughs> exactly. Is that a reference to something? <laughs> No, just people will will buy yeah. old broke down school buses and park them and use them for storage. Okay. Yeah, and I know some people in uh, up up north. Mm-hmm. I went and bought some equipment. They had four <laughs> broke down school buses <laughs> all next to each other, full of lumber. That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's reasonable. I mean, it worked. Yeah, they the person said they got them for like two hundred bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. It was cheaper than any sort of, and I mean, they're long, so they've got all the long boards in there. So I was like, man, good idea. Um, but th- this. This vehicle has been there for 15 years. There's never been a rule against it. And now he's getting a fine and t- told he has five days to remove the vehicle from the property. He doesn't know what to do. And he he printed out all the codes and he can't find it. It's not even in the codes. There is no law. They're just making up laws they go. They are just making it up. Mm-hmm. But yet he's going to get a real fine. And at that point, I mean, people people in that town have voted to have personal liberties with their properties. You know, very limited regulations. Mm-hmm. That's what they voted for. Yeah. And that's what the laws are on the books. And yet this person is being harassed and fined. Mm-hmm. And this and is where threatened. you need a group of citizens to go to City Hall. The next yeah. time the city has a meeting and raise sand. Yeah. And have a recall election <laughs> and recall the city council and fire the chief of police. Yeah. It needs to happen. Yeah. But yeah. are you going to be able to get that kind of uh, turnout when people would rather be at the lake or be at the ball field mm-hmm. or right. be watching something on television? I think a lot of people are, they are, you know, waking up to, to those kinds of injustices and they're getting upset, but they are just focused in the wrong direction. They're all, you know, how many people are, you know, go to, go to a march or go to DC or go to this or go to that. You know, people are all riled up, but they're not, they're not focused in their own community. Yeah, but you know you're, I mean? you're looking at three people per local community yeah, and true. they all congregate and there's 10,000 people at the march. It's that like, is true. At home, they could only get four people to show up to a right. meeting yeah. and all four of them are at that march. And the, each one of these people is the one of four in their local community. And that's the problem. Yeah. 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 And and part of it goes back to the education that years ago they stopped teaching civics. Mm-hmm. They stopped teaching the constitution. They stopped teaching how local government runs so that they could get control of those local governments. They started teaching social studies instead of civics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also our culture has been modified, you know, right. to the point that most people don't know their neighbors and your neighbors would be the ones that would go to court with you and say, Hey guys, this is ridiculous. What are y'all doing? Cause you know, we, we've, we've seen the truck. We know what he uses it for. It's not a problem. We've also looked, help, helped him look into the code. And we can't find a problem with this. Those are going to people that those people will vouch for you. Mm-hmm. But I mean, a lot of times the people, people's inner circle are dispersed throughout the country. You know, Oh, I got a good friend in Kansas. I got a good right. friend in Nebraska and stuff. Well, the, they can't go with you, to and the, they don't know their next door neighbor. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're in a we're in a bad spot. And and as we have just learned by talking about it, it all does. It's all connected. Yeah, yeah. All of the issues. It's not an issue of capital punishment or not. No. Yeah. In which we all already knew that, but yeah. it's not right. an it's not an it's not an issue of yeah. What's the the you know district attorney doing in New York? That's you know, arresting people that got shot. And we didn't get and, here overnight. It, it right. has this taken us decades to get here. Mm-hmm. And there's not a quick fix. Right. Yeah. We're not going to make a decision today and things are all going to change. This is going to be yeah. our kids. Yeah. So, well, well we, have, we appreciate it. it. I hope y'all, uh, hope y'all enjoyed our first episode. Um, and these, these topics are, they're going to be, um, readdressed i'm sure we're going to bring things up multiple times like what you're saying they've they're all kind of connected anyways we've we've brought up other topics you know that aren't directly related to this but are indirectly related to it and everything i'm sure we're going to uh, you know address those again and um the, the whole purpose of this show really is to is to help people like us who are trying to think okay how can i be a good citizen where i'm at where do i stand on things it's you know i mean 
some people don't even know where they stand on politics at all. And that's, that's not a good place to be. If you're there, you definitely want to like start working on that, you know? And a lot of people are like, okay, I know I'm uh, a Republican or Democrat or, or libertarian and stuff. But even when you look at the parties, the, you know, the party is a, is a, a monolith that holds so many varying opinions. So now you got to start thinking, where do I, where do I stand on this? Where do I stand on this? You know, saying you're a Republican or Democrat doesn't even say whether you do or don't believe we should have capital punishment, you know, and there's so many arguments in that that we didn't, haven't even touched. You know, we, we talked right. about some of them and everything. And, um, you know, there's, there's just a, a lot into it. So you want to think, you want to think critically about it. And, um, and we want to be able to know where to put our focus, where to put our, our energy. Maybe we need to stop worrying so much about the DA in, in New York. And maybe we need to worry about the DA in our, our own hometown and figure out what's up with that. Yeah. You know, go to our own uh, city council meetings and just sit in, you know. I've, I've only done that once so far. It was pretty enlightening. I, I'd like to do it mm-hmm. more. And just even, you're not there to do anything. I just want to learn how the system works. And if something shady is going on, I kind of want to be here to to witness it, you know. And yeah. um you know, so hopefully this. Well, having having that prosecutor man just pretty much openly say, "Oh, I know that this is yeah, this is this person's innocent." I was like, eh, "It's my job." Nice guy. That's the thing. Creepy yeah. because well, it means emotionally, it's not a big deal to him. He's not connected. He's completely disconnected emotionally, which you do not want. <laughs> I know it's so bad. Yeah, it's like this person's life. You know. It is in your hands, in your yes. hands, and you're prosecuting. You're the one bringing charges. Yeah, it's like you're not, he didn't have the job. When you're the not a, got arrested. You're not a clerk. You're not somebody that's just. Right. I just file paperwork. You know how they told me to do it. Like you're right. the one deciding. Hey, I'm I'm going to attack this person. I'm going to go after this person. You know? Right. Yeah. So it's so yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, this show will 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 serve to do that sort of thing. Getting people to think about stuff, even if people don't come come to the same conclusions. Think about it. Have a reasonable argument. Why do you think this should be the way it is, or this shouldn't be the way that it is, or whatever? And um and you know be involved and do stuff. So yeah, we definitely appreciate your time. Um, hopefully y'all enjoyed this, and uh, we will see y'all next time. This is the Sold Cloak Show, and you can uh, find us at soldcloak.net. S O L D C L O A K dot net. The episodes will be available there, also on whatever podcast uh, platform or player you prefer to use. You can just search for Sold Cloak. Uh, we should be there. Or we should be there soon, and uh, and we may also uh, upload this to a couple other places like Rumble or YouTube. We're not going to focus on that way too much in case whatever policies they have and they don't like stuff. But mostly, this is going to be primarily on the website, and you can try to subscribe to it any way that you find most convenient. So. Uh, Y'all have a good day and uh, peace out. All right. Bye.